Miss Al Alusi is a Sunni Iraqi from Anbar province and a member of Iraq's parliament. A controversial figure in 1976, while studying in Cairo, he was sentenced to death in absentia for his opposition to Saddam Hussein and went into exile in Germany. He has close ties with America, the UK, Turkey and indeed with Israel. In 2003, after the liberation of his country, he returned to Iraq to head up the Iraq National Congress's Supreme National Debalthification Commission. However, he was removed from this position after making a public trip to Israel in 2004. And sadly, as a consequence of this and of his other controversial political activities, his sons were assassinated in a terrible attack later that year. With Myth al Alalusi, we will discuss the state of Iraq. We will discuss prospects for democracy and stability in Iraq today. And we will discuss a, the possible way forward for the Middle East as a whole. Welcome back to ANN Satellite Television. It's great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Our guest today is Mithal Alalusi, one of Iraq's greatest politicians, in my view, because he's a man that's really stood up for, well, for democratic change for Iraq and for a better future for his country. He's a member of parliament in Iraq's assembly. Mithal, thank you so much for being our guest on ANN Television. It's really great to have you with us. Thank you. Oh, bless you. We're going to talk, uh, well, uh, we, can, we can talk about everything. Uh, we'll start with the, the key issue of Iraq itself and where Iraq is at. Today we see an Iraq virtually divided into three parts. One part is dominated by Daesh, ISIS, a group which is seen as a pariah by much of the world. Another part is dominated by Kurds who would very much like to gain full autonomy and a nation of their own. The third part is dominated by a Shiite majority who feel that this is their moment of empowerment and leadership, and many of whom wish to see Iraq held together. Iraq is a broken nation in full-scale civil war. It has had a troubled history for years before its liberation and is now in turmoil. Allocating blame is almost futile, but recognizing the problem and trying to make this great nation less of a place thing for the great powers may be helpful. What's your feeling? I, you're, we, we see this broken nation that many of us have come to love. Uh, those of us that travel to Iraq look at it as a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, it's a place of magnificent history. It's a place of many cultures. And now it's, it's riven by war and uh, internecine strife. I mean, it must, you're in Iraq, it must make you despair. Um, can you salvage some hope for us? Where are, where are we going with, with Iraq today? What's the picture? Thank you. Thank you so much for the questions. Where we are going with Iraq, where we are going with Middle East, where yes. we are going with the human being there, where we are going with our principle, which we did believe in it and we did fight for it, all of us. Mm. Uh, but let me put the questions, if you allow me, in this way. We, British, Great Britain people, we Americans, I mean, this is the main power which they were behind, mm. having the change in Iraq, and we are so happy to have the change. We are so happy to have now a different opinion, different position, different parties. So many thanks again for all of the British, whatever the position, their position regarding the issues in Iraq. And many thanks for all of the American soldiers and the American policy, which they have made mm -hmm. the change realistic, and we have it now. 
But the question is, are we happy with what we have it now? I really don't believe that we will find an Iraqi or an American or a British politician which will answer, yeah, I am happy. We are mm. happy with the general situation because we still have hope. Mm. I'm afraid if we continue having the same problems with the Islamist parties and the same problem with the uh, Iranian regime mm. and the same yes. problem with the, the Al-Qaeda and ISIS and more than that we have today even Hezbollah very active uh, in, in Iraq. In Iraq? Yes, yes, sure. Right. It wasn't the case a few years ago mm. but now they are there, mm. officially they are. If we continue having this uh, situation we will not have peace either in Iraq or outside Iraq. So also many thanks I have to say for the International Alliance regarding uh, helping Iraq and Syria to fight ISIS. But I do really want to have seen a clearly American international position, not just regarding ISIS, mm. regarding the power behind ISIS which mm -hmm. many of us we say Saudi Arabia is behind it. Biden did say mm. Saudi Arabia is one of the power, Turkey one of the power behind ISIS as well as Iran, Iran behind Hezbollah and the militia. So time is to work with other tools with different goals than what we have done until now. Now it seems like Iraq is broken into three pieces and it's going to be very hard to put it back together into one Iraq again, or is that wrong? You know, it's through the history, we've got many problems in this area. And mm. Iraq was many times the center of the hope as well as the problems. Mm. And you have been attacked from the other nations or other uh, powers, let's say, and through the history. Honestly, since we have lost the Iraqi Jewish, the mm. balance in the Iraqi society doesn't exist anymore like what we got it in the past. Mm. Then we did lost the Christian. Yes. In the reality, yes. there is no Christian anymore in Baghdad yes. in many, many provinces. If there is some Christian, they have to be very careful. Otherwise, the price will be mm. very, very high. We have lost the Yazidi now. Yes. And we have seen it, how they yes. have been attacked. Mm. How ISIS, how Iraqi Muslims, they did join ISIS and how they did attack the Yazidi. Mm. They killed them, they used them, they forced women to do something bad. Mm. It was very, very bad. I really do believe uh, the mistake what we have done to trying to look for Iraq as a sectarian Iraq. From the beginning, we have made the mistake. Mr. Bremer's mistake was clear. That much Sunni, that much Shi, that much Kurd in the governing council. I will agree if we say we need to understand that the Kurd, they mm -hmm. have been born as a free people, and they need and there is their right to make the decision which way they have to go or they want to go. But now to split the Arabs, the rest of the Iraqi, which may be 70% of Iraq and more, mm. forced them to split in sectarian policy. It was our mistake. Mm. When I say our, because uh, I believe we Democrats and we liberals in Iraq, we have the same point. We, we used to have, we used to have the same point of view. What you got it here in Great Britain or in America. So, the, to the production of a sectarian fight of sectarian militia did it start in the beginning of all three as we did understand there is two problems in Iraq and instead to look to the human being to the women rights to the rule of law mm. we did believe uh, we serve the people better in through giving them more uh, uh, clearly identity Sunni and Shi honestly I will not be angry or I, I can live with it. I will be happy to have seen uh, Shi'i parties, liberals, Democrats, mm. yes. controlling the Shi'i areas, uh, as well as to have seen Sunni parties, liberals, Democrats, 
normal people, they, they are governing or you, uh, controlling the Sunni area. What we are, what you have it now, extremist Muslims and the Shi'i part, extremist Muslims and the Sunni part, and both of them, they are producing very clear a network of terrorists and extremists, which all of us, we are paying the price, even if you are living in London or in Paris or Madrid or Argentina. So you would say that extremists control, I can see that extremists control um, Sunni Iraq, for want of a better word, or Northwestern Iraq, or whatever you like to call it, the, the, um, because we have ISIS, Daesh there. Then we have the rest of, then we have the Kurdish Iraq, and you have a, a separatist movement there. Um, like it or not, it's, it exists. And then we have Shiite Iraq, um, or at least Baghdad and the South. Um, Baghdad and the South are con all, is also controlled by extremists? No. Of course. You would say so? Of course I would say that. We politicians mm -hmm. there in Baghdad, in the parliament or in the government, we try to do our best. I can't live with anyone. We have to. Mm -hmm. This is what we believe in it. You and I, everybody is free to believe in any kind of, of political direction. And the, the condition he must respect it, the constitution, the way, the free way of life and the human being. Uh, yeah, of course, Baghdad till the south, the militia is playing now, now, the main role. The issues mm -hmm. change in Baghdad, in the south, in all of Iraq, really very quick. Uh, maybe if you asked me the same question two years ago, I would not answer this in, in this as now. The militia, they are controlling, they are even taking us and the government hostage in their hand. And let us be honest and serious. Who is the man who can give now the order to the militia? The government? Mm, the prime yeah. minister? The parliament? Uh, Najaf and Karbala? Of course not. Mr. Qasim Soleimani, he is the leader and the first leader who really can influence the militia to go right or to go left. So outside the green zone, the government is weaker than we believe and what we need. So the Basically, I mean, you may have issues with the government and Hyder al Abadi, the prime minister, and so on. You may have issues, but you're, what you're saying is the government doesn't control the, the militias. The, Iran controls the militias. Does Iran, we were talking about some very specific militias, what we call the, the Bada Brigade or whatever it is now called. Um, I mean, um, these groups of this kind, these major, major force, armed forces, um, who are conducting the fight against ISIS, um, are, are they not, are these people not necessary given that we've got the emergence of, a, of, of such a frightening group as ISIS is to us in the West anyway? I mean, don't we need these, these militia groups to, uh, to fight them? I mean... Oh yeah, we have to be fair. Uh, uh, we have lost the control in Mosul. Then we have lost it in Salah al -Din. Then we did lost it in Ambar. Mm. And Baghdad was insecure anymore. Mm. Um, Maliki government and the Iraqi forces, they were not in position, honestly, to stop mm. ISIS as they need to do. Or they mm. need, uh, uh, yeah, they need to do. I agree with you that uh, with Mr. Sistani call for jihad, uh, the issues did change. I will agree with you that many of our young people, the Shi'i people, good people, they have done it and they did fight ISIS and they did stop uh, ISIS to mm. control Baghdad. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I will agree with you that uh, Iranian help was immediately there. I mm. have to say it that yes. honestly, the Iran, they did support us immediately. Mm. In a time as the White House did dis discuss the issues, is ISIS dangerous or not dangerous? Yes. The yeah. Iranian, they have done the decision within a few hours mm. and they make a decision to help. And we did welcome this help. And me, Mithal, I will welcome 
any kind of help will come to Iraq to stop terrorists if their names is ISIS or their names is others, Sunni or Shi. Mm. But the fact is, Iran have, they have done it not to keep Baghdad safe. Mm. This will be very naive to believe that really they are so worried about Baghdad and human mm -hmm. being in Baghdad. They are using the vacuum which we have it. Uh, Mr. Obama administration, they have no big interest to be involved in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. with regarding Iraq for their understanding, it is Bush issues. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. don't want to be involved. We say, and we did say, this is wrong. It will produce vacuum. Mm -hmm. And Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, those other three big nations around Iraq, they will use it. And they will use Iraq to have more power and to control more their area. And it will help the fascists uh, mm -hmm. to play games and to exist and to be more dangerous. So the future, if we, I mean, as things stand, the status quo is pretty disastrous. The, um, essentially, what we're saying is that we have a fairly weak central government, that the Kurds are going their own way, and that the, the grassroots leadership on the ground with the Sunni community and with the Shiite community, the south and the northwest, are becoming extreme and also in, in to some degree in the hands of foreign influence and 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 your I mean but these these militia leaders are they in the hands of foreigners I mean I, the, does Iran have that much control over what goes on in Iraq in terms of I think uh, till now uh, there is some uh, uh, position in the West which they believe Middle East is far away. Those mm. problems yes, is far yes. away. Uh, well, it is c clear far away f if you mean mm. a few thousand kilometers, a few yes. hundred yes. kilometers, yeah. But all of our we are living in a small village today. So we cannot split uh, what's happening in Iraq from the area and we cannot split the area from what will happen or does happen in Europe. And it is wrong also trying to split Israel from all of the problems or the hope sure. of the future of this area. So and somehow we have to understand it is our responsibility, all of us, and somehow we have a responsibility to deal with the international uh, uh, terrorist network. Look, my friend, uh, as it was tough between Iran and the international committee, the talk was hard, we did hear it. A clearly threat from Hassan Nasrallah or from Qasem Soleimani or from Iran, mm -hmm. if we will attack you everywhere. We will attack you in Europe, we will attack you in America, we will attack you in South America, we will kill your kid and etc. I really believe in this threat, mm. but to attack me in South America, to repeat what they have done in Argentina, that's mean there is a clearly terrorist network. Mm. So we have now two kind of terrorist network international wide, ISIS, Al Qaeda, and the other, which is still operating through, operated through the government here and there. Mm. Can we live with this kind of, of security for our children in London or our children mm. in New York? I don't think so. So this is our responsibility, all of us, to make the decision. Mm. Shall we live free or shall we be taken hostage from the others who they are controlling the government in Istanbul or in Tehran or in Saudi Arabia? Mm. Then, my friend, it is a big mistake to believe Saudi Arabian, the Wahhabi, they are representative all of the Sunni. So what we are trying now to produce, or just because we are just watching and doing nothing, Saudi Arabian with the money, driving a clearly mm. bad war in Yemen, even if the militia, like Hezbollah, they do exist in Yemen, but we have a very bad war. 
And the Saudi, they are trying to use now the Iraqi area for their own goals to get more control on the Saudi family problems. And the Saudi now, if we trust the Saudi to drive the Sunni in the right way to stop uh, Shi'i influence or Iranian influence, we are wrong. But the Saudi, you can't blame the Saudis for everything. Uh, they, I mean, all right, they, the Saudis have uh, Saudis have huge hostility to Iran, and much of this plays out in a proxy war in Iraq, and Iraq is the victim of this. And the Saudis would argue that they have good reason to to feel that Iran is threatening them or threatening to them. And now, whether you agree with that or you don't, that's the the Saudi perspective. The Iranians um, are engaged in looking after their interests and they they would argue that their interests are threatened in the region that they they're threatened in Syria it's not just Iraq and that they have they have their own responsibilities I mean um, at the end of the day these big players and you're right to mention the Turks because the Turks are in some ways um, uh, almost bigger meddlers than the, the rest of them because um, it's a questionable as to how much uh, as, uh, the, the, the Saudi relationship with groups like Jebet al Nusra maybe, but with ISIS, it, you, you ha there are question marks about it. But the Turkish relationship with ISIS is very clear and, and, and there. So Turkey has played a very significant role in fermenting trouble um, and yet all of these powers are, have their own problems and um, you uh, blaming them just like blaming America and Britain for Iraq's problems I mean yes okay you can you can blame everybody but at the end of the world at the end of the day Iraq has to build its own future doesn't it, it has to it has to come it has to pull itself back together and, and somehow make Peace. Do you, do you see um, an opportunity for uh, a new Iraq, a, a peaceful Iraq? I mean, is it, is it? Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, the normality will win. But it will take time, and the price will be higher than we believe. Uh, we in the Iraqi Nation Party, as I went to Israel first time, I came back. Just a few hundred people. Yes. A few hundred, no, it's no truth. Just my family and some friends, they were uh, saying to me, yes, we are with you. We believe in you. And year after, one year after, we were 400 voters or 4,000 voters after that. And then I became to be member in mm. the parliament. Then repeatedly now member in the parliament again, but with more than once one member in the Iraqi parliament. So you see there is a progress. It gives us hope that the Iraqi young people, they vote for our list and just mm. uh, in the last election, more than 250,000 Iraqis. No, I was very impressed. here and few hundred in the first election. You see, there is a really pro progress. But uh, I uh, think uh, uh, Saudi Arabian, as Mr. Biden did say, they did invest with other countries, they did invest a few hundred millions dollars and weapon and training for ISIS, and it is truth, mm. as well as the Turkey. Uh, th the point is, uh, can we live international wide with such kind of threat? Thanks God, the, the British uh, security uh, agencies, till now they did succeed mm. to stop ISIS from attacking London. Mm. Just one mistake, mm. and the attack will be there. Just one mistake, yes, and many good people, they will pay a huge price because of those terrorists. So I think we should act now. The future of Iraq uh, will come back. We, we will go uh, in different direction. But in the end of the day, the normality will win. I'm saying in a state to have seen terrorists using the Iraqi budget, Mm. We are a very rich country, mm. and using the uh, the diplomatic passports, and the diplomatic channels, and the diplomatic uh, 
posts and others kind mm. of tools yeah. and instead to have Hezbollah using that or ISIS using that we should act now we should act now well let's talk about the way Iraq should be will Iraq remain a democracy or not can Iraq remain unified some would argue there is only one way this beautiful but broken nation can go on, and that is as a confederation in the style of Switzerland. Certainly some formula has to be found which empowers Sunnis and meets the aspirations of the Kurds while still allowing Iraq's predominant Shiite community to have a sense of security and stability. Iraq has its own unique style of democracy, but can it survive, and indeed, should it survive. Is democracy in Iraq worth saving? Okay. Iraq is in a mess. Um, we need to act to make a better Iraq. Is how, what is your vision of Iraq? I mean, do you see Iraq as a confederacy between three great nations? You talked about the minorities, the do you see a future for the, I mean, you suggested that the, the, the loss of the Jewish, the um, Christian and the Yazidi communities as, as they get driven out is disempowering and breaking up Iraq, um, or is part of what's destroying Iraq. The, do you see Iraq as a confederation of these three great blocks, or do you see it as a United country, um, can it ever be a united country again like it once was? Is it, um, I mean, the Kurds will go their own way. The, or is there hope that the Iraq will be one Iraq again? I don't like to have seen one Iraq again because of a dictator power in Baghdad controlling everybody. Mm. Uh, Iraqi now, they might or we might have many mistakes and many problems, but we don't want to be controlled again from a dictators. Whatever the dictator is, yeah, Sunni, yeah. Shi, and etc. That's yeah. why also we are so afraid from the militia. The militia, they are producing such kind of dictators here and there. Maybe not in the central government, but in the local areas. Mm. They are controlling the human being. I do believe yeah, in a confederate system. I did repeat it many, many times in my interviews, in my right. parliament, in my parties. And the Iraqi, in general, they know which position we have in my party. Yeah, I do believe in a confederate system. I do believe this reflected also the new Iraq. The new Iraq should be not means. All of us, we are following the same order, the same colors, the same mm. yes. smiling, and yes. because the the president, he has birthday, so all of us, we have to dance on the street. So in Iraq, we are not interested in. We are interested in Iraq with human being uh, values, standard, women's rights, children to be free. The education is in the, in the right direction uh, to enjoy life and to enjoy the, uh, uh, the Iraqi history, which is really beautiful. Now we are lying in our schools. We are teaching our kids not the truth. You, you will never find it to say that before the Arab, we Arabs, I am an Iraqi Arab's origin. Mm -hmm. Before we came to Iraq, Arab and Muslim, Iraq wasn't an empty area. There is Jewish, there is Christian, there is mm -hmm. Kurd, there is other mm -hmm. nations. There is also Pharisee. There is many, many people living in this beautiful area. Sure. So I think such kind of Iraq what we hope to have. And by the way, now more than five million Iraqi living outside Iraq. Yeah. And yeah. at least two and a half or two million are displaced inside Iraq. Well, out of a population, what, what is the population of Iraq now currently about? The Islamic parties, they would love to say 35 million mm. Iraqi, um, maybe, but I think it's less than 35 million. Anyway, mm -hmm. this is the Iraqis' uh, publication, as you say. But uh, once again, to have Iraq without these 5 million or without mm -hmm. having the, f the yeah. freedom for the other 2 million living inside Iraq, it doesn't reflect the Iraq which we all of us we need. The Kurds will go their own way. 
with our blessing, we don't want to have fight again or to be used again. Uh, but uh, splitting Iraq again in confederate system, Sunni mm. Shi'i, it will not work. But um, so you believe, obviously, I mean, stating the obvious, you believe in democracy because you are a de democratically elected politician. I was very impressed. I mean, much of your support comes from the young people. And I remember going to Mustan Saria University, ostensibly a Shiite university. Um, and uh, to Babel University, and I would talk to students and at the time of the elections, and quite a number said, we support Mithal Alusi. You, you, you had your support there amongst the young. Why? Because you've taken a stand. You took quite a stand. Um, I mean, you, you, you've taken great personal risk. You went to Israel, which was very controversial. And, you, and, not, and, and your own political stand has cost you dear because you lost two of your sons to assassination. Um, so it's been a very painful stand for democracy, your vision of democracy and a democratic Iraq that you've taken. The constitution was changed, I mean, under Maliki's time in, in, as pres the prime minister of Iraq. Uh, the constitution was changed and we had we went to this new system where elections were province by province by province instead of national, nationwide elections. Some would argue that in a multicultural society um, like Iraq, this is very destructive. Um, was it? Was that really the beginning of the end for effective democracy to, in Iraq or was that, was that a major problem? Uh, no, first of all, we didn't really change the constitution. We did change the uh, election law. Well, yes, yes. okay. Uh, yes. Secondly, so still we have uh, we can, we are able also to to change the the law again and again. So the mm. parliament can do it without changing the constitution. Okay, all right, right. Point taken. Yeah. Uh, secondly. Uh, each law regarding election laws, there is positive issues and negative. Uh, to have more democratic in Iraq, I even if I don't like such kind of law because my party paying a huge price because of it. Yes, you and did. Many Kurds, they don't like it also because mm -hmm. they are paying a huge price. They have many voters, Kurd voters in Baghdad and uh, mm -hmm. Kut and Imara and other provinces, and now mm -hmm. they cannot reach the level to be uh, members. Mm. So this kind, such kind of voters will be lost. Yes. Other Sunni, which they have it in Basra will, and Kut, it will be lost. Other Shi'is who they are existing in Kirkuk, and mm. other, it will be lost. So we will lose many people. They will lose their rights and uh, their election uh, important uh, uh, position. But in general, if we have this law, or we still staying with the other, the old law, mm. we should understand we need t exactly clearly now after ISIS. Let's say we are cleaning this area from ISIS. Mm. What shall we do now? We need, first of all, to have infrastructure clear. But we need more than that. We need a local government, a local government mm. which the yeah. trust between the government this local government and the people who they are living there yes. is there. Yes. yes so yes. and somehow we need to have a, a functioning political process, which also means election. That's why uh, it is really very naive to believe replacing ISIS will be done through tribes or mullahs mm -hmm. or sheikh. There is not that big difference. We need to replace them with the power of the young people, with the power of be free. If I believe I'm free and I am producing such kind of, of way of thinking in my family, it will be difficult to be controlled from ISIS, militias, or whatever. But they don't think they're free, do they? I mean, they're, 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 the, the community, if you're talking young people in Anbar province or in, um, in, in much of the north, to Crete or wherever, Mosul, these people, part of the problem are 
was the control, the way control was exercised historically from the center after the liberation of Iraq. After the liberation of Iraq, these people were disempowered, felt disempowered. Now you could say they deserved it because they bef previously they were, they were part of, uh, under the hand of Saddam Hussein and part of the problem, you could argue. But nonetheless, they felt disempowered. And what did we do? Bremer brought in, bless his heart, not his fault because it was no doubt Rumsfeld's doing, but Bremer brought in Nord Number no. 1, which had the debarthification law, uh, you know, uh, for Iraq. And Maliki, um, well, the, the, you, um, under, I'm not blaming him entirely because there were other politicians involved, but strengthened the debarthification law uh, and made it tougher. Uh, because they felt they could. Um, uh, some of these politicians concerned were the darlings of the West, but nonetheless, they, they strengthened this, this, this law. We still haven't removed it. It's still there in Iraq. And um, it's all very well to say, re invest in reconstruction and, and so on. But there is a perception that the modern Iraq is an unfair Iraq, that it is... It is putting down certain parts of society that has been created. Um, I mean, do we have to, is there, can Iraq be fixed? Can Iraq be fixed and can, can you have these people in Anbar province, in, in the provinces of the north, in Mosul and so on, feel part of Iraq without major changes to, to the to the, to the laws in Iraq. I mean, is it? Uh, and the debatification, uh, as you know, or you might know, I was director general or one from the first. I was the first director general in the debatification mm -hmm. in 04, or end of 03, 04. Mm -hmm. We did start uh, January 04, official. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me tell you the following. Till I was there, till I left, uh, uh, I did leave uh, the debatification. We did uh, uh, cut just thousand, thousand, hundred, hundred fifty uh, person from their job mm, mm. from all of Iraq. Only one thousand, one hundred fifty Ba'athis. We did tell them we don't want you to stay in your position. Mm. The opposite is correct. From January, the January I was the first director general sitting there alone. I really don't know how to start, how to start. Mm -hmm. So we did start end of February after we got our staff and etc. Uh, this will be February 2004 then? 2004. Right? Yeah. From February 2004 till mm -hmm. uh, September 1st, 2004, we gave the green light, the permission to 12,000 Iraqi Ba'athis to go back to their job. Mm. Very mm. quick mm. Uh, uh, mechanism. We did prove the issues mm. and be back and be back. So just because we did believe in the debathification, our decision was clear. We need those people. We are coming to have the liberation for all of the Iraqis mm. and not to punish some of the Iraqis because of Saddam mm. uh, criminality. That was the position, that's what we did practice. After September 2004, I went to Israel, so they cut me from the job, and they stopped such kind of, of practice. Mm, mm. They say that was methyl practice. Mm. And uh, by the way, uh, if you look now to the Iraqi officers, Iraqi officers, which uh, they are more than 35 or 40 years old, all of them, they were Ba'athis. Yes. Oh, oh no, them. absolutely. Yes. It is yes. wrong if they try to, to tell us, oh, mm -hmm. he wasn't Ba'athis mm -hmm. and he was against Saddam. This is not the truth. All of them. Mm -hmm. All of those officers in the Iraqi army, they were Ba'athis. Yeah. Maybe because of that, we have such kind of a huge damage. Mm -hmm. So we need fresh blood. We need young people, young officers from all of Iraq 
to build the new Iraqi army and not to build the new Iraqi army through the old opportunist Ba'athis. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think Ba'athis, they are fascist. As well as I believe Islamic parties, they are Islamic fascist. The mm. difference, one is Ban-Arab fascist, the other is Islamist fascist. Maybe this will show you why the old Ba'athis in the security, they mm. find it very easy for them to work for the Islamic parties. You know, both yes, fascists. Yes. Anyway, uh, but I mean, I, I do believe, uh, yeah, you're right. The Sunni, they did lost uh, the power. With Saddam, they got more power or the center power in the yeah. hands. But now I do like to have local government not represented to all of the Mosul in one guy. Yeah. has been supported from Turkey or Turkey intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Come on, enough is enough. I would love to have seen Fallujah. They have their own government. Heat have their own government. Shirgat has own government. And we will see that the change will come. So whatever the, the government in Baghdad going to say, we need local governments and we need to support them and we need to understand, even if they attack us mm. in the political way, yeah. They don't agree with us. It's good, fine. This is a democracy. Let us j enjoy it. Mm. But to replace ISIS with uh, local tribes and mullah, we will continue having Al-Qaeda. ISIS is the normal production of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. And do you see, I mean, it, do you see it possible now given because those, those very laws you were responsible for enforcing have been strengthened. They have been made harsher. They have been made, uh, one would argue, they become a cause for the, for the Sunni community feeling resentful. Um, do you think they should be repealed? Or do you, do, you, do you think that, I mean, how can we gain the trust of this Iraq's Sunni community again and get them to move away from ISIS. You said the tribal leaders weren't the answer. What is the answer? The Give the young people the chance to have the power in the hand, even if they fight each other. The main point, they are not using weapon. Mm. Let them have the money and do the project. To have the old Sunni leaders against. No, look, the Sunni leaders now, they are so happy because mm. they know it. London and Washington, they believe Saudi Arabia mm. should replace Washington and American uh, and London responsibility there. And the Saudi money is coming. Mm. People who they put the Saudi money in your banks in London, they cannot really, they cannot uh, uh, replace uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda. Mm. Yeah. I believe in the young people. I believe even if mistakes, normal mistakes, okay. But on normal mistake is not okay. Let us give the power to the young people to build their own way of life. And you will see local government, they did succeed or not succeed. It doesn't make that much. So, I mean, um, yeah, we, we, we defeat ISIS. Uh, the world defeats ISIS. Iraq defeats ISIS. Then, then what? I mean, is the present government, the government that we have, there are no elections for another two years. Um, the government that we have capable of not being vindictive. I mean, not being, because if they come in then and punish the, those that have supported ISIS, then we're back to where we were. We're back to a divided Iraq. We're back to, I mean, can you, can you envision this government being Compassionate and understanding, and letting letting uh, letting a spirit of forgiveness um, move in, and then for a new era. All of us, not just the government, we need to think about a reconciliation program, a real reconciliation program. Uh, and all of us, we need to think about having the rule of law, which mm. uh, is very weak now in, in Iraq. Of course, yes. And all of us, we need to think about how we should stop corruptions. Uh, the Americans uh, report the last uh, few days talking about 200 billion dollars in the name of Iraqi politicians outside Iraq. Mm. Yes, uh, yes, yes. And we know 
to which peoples belong, mm. those 200 billion uh, dollars, and we know also where, mm. in which banks, or we believe to know in which banks. Uh, yeah, many things sh it must be changed, but uh, my problem always really, or I ask myself, the people in general, all of us, the government, mm. the mm. Americans, the Germans, the Turkey, all of us, we are declaring day and night we are anti-ISIS, we don't accept ISIS, we will stop ISIS and etc. But where is our priority? Mm. Is it really to stop ISIS or we have also other goals and other uh, mm. kind of economic goals or influence goals and, and etc. I do believe we need stability in Baghdad. There's no time now to have more change, each day a change. Mm. But also the Iraqi citizen, there is an uh, other problem now. A few months salaries that doesn't pay. Mm. So mo at least some of the areas, provinces, four months, and people, they didn't receive their salary. Mm. So we yes. have a clearly economic problem. It will be maybe a big revolution without being under control. Uh, I think it is not fair to leave the some politician, few politician, having their account mm. in Emirates, in, yes, yes. in London, in, in, you know, and the other millions of people suffering and paying the price because of those corruption. Baghdad government need to give the proof and mm. to win the trust by the majority, not just by the British or by the Iranian or by the parliament or others. So the government is now can continue, must continue, but must win the trust of the Iraqi citizen. Otherwise, if we don't have the trust of the Iraqi citizen in the system in general, mm -hmm. it will not just divide it. It will be really under the control of all of the extremists, militia, ISIS, and others. The broader Middle East is riven with conflict. Some would argue that what we see writ small in Iraq is writ large everywhere. We have and an incipient Sunni-Shiite civil war raging across the Middle East in which the minorities are the victims alongside the vulnerable from these two great confessional groups. Can Israel be absorbed into the fabric of the Middle East today? What prospects are there for a more peaceful Middle East? What prospects are there for a better future? Just talking in conclusion a little about your, yourself, your own vision for the Middle East as a whole, because you took a very interesting stand. I mean, early on in after the lib liberation of Iraq, you went um, because you believed in peace. You went to Israel. Um, this, uh, I mean, horrendous personal price you've paid for not just this but for the for the political stand you've taken for a free Iraq uh, because you lost both of your sons over time um, assassinated, um, two of your sons. Um, the, where, what, what drove you? Why did you go? You, because of your vision of a peaceful Middle East, what drove you to, to take what was perceived by some of your colleagues as a controversial step in, in going to Israel? I did lost the only two sons which I have. Mm. Uh, but I did really pay a huge price, as you just said. Mm. Yes, there is no greater win. price a man can pay. But it's I did horrendous. Win. I don't want to be the tools of the old fascists, either Arabs, mm. fascists, or Muslim fascists. And the issue why mm. I can also tell mm. you this is not just believing in the privilege of having peace. Mm. No. It's no truth. There is a need. There is a clear need for the societies in Iraq, in Israel, in the region to talk to each other. Time is over to be hostage, to be taken hostage mm -hmm. from Arafat, from Nasser, from some crazy mullahs here and there. And all of the society has been taken hostage. Mm -hmm. This is not, uh, not, not correct. My constitution, my Iraqi law now and in the past say, each Iraqi, if he got his, we say, Shahada Jinsi, the Iraqi identity, he's an Iraqi. What we will do now, or what can we do, or what shall we do? If an Iraqi Jewish coming back 
to Baghdad and say, well, this is the piece of paper. I have it. I am an Iraqi. Yes. Shall you say you are Iraqi or go out, arrest no, him, kill I him? Mean, no, of course, you must accept them. But no, so we must accept him, exactly. Yeah. As we did accept many Iraqis, they have been born in Iran, and we mm. welcome them. Yes. Many Iraqis, they have been born in other countries, and we welcome them. I do believe the peace today is a need for stability, for security, for best future of all of us. I do believe staying by the old theory and by the old mechanism, we have ISIS. So if we really mean it to control ISIS and others, we should be strong enough to talk about the real problems and to open it. Because also, whatever with respect to the Palestinian rights, the Israeli also they are paying or did pay a huge price through terrorist actions. Well, you so could somehow we have yeah. the same position. Well, regarding the Palestinian, uh, I think they have the right to exist, of course, but we should be realistic. It takes years. It is not a, a politician decision. No. Do peace, do not do peace. And I believe Iraq having peace with Israel will be the bridge, will be the power, will yes. be the tools to help Palestinians to go over their own uh, complex. Regarding. I'm sure you're right. I mean, I think the, you can't have Palestinian-Israeli peace without peace between Israel and the whole Arab world, which is what's envisioned in the Arab plan, after all. I mean, that the, 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 the Arab world would make peace with Israel as part of the whole peace deal. Um, and you're right, it is the core, in a sense it's the core issue, it's not where most blood is shed, because we look at Syria, we look at Iraq, we look at Yemen and Libya, um, uh, we look at everything since the Arab Spring and weep, really. I mean, it has been a, a, a terrible time for the Middle East, but, but it, is, um, it, is the, it is, if you like, the core conflict. Um, so you are right. I think your step was hugely courageous uh, that you, you went to travel to Israel and bravely came back again with, with this stand, having made this stand. Um, but um, what would you, where do we go from here? I mean, we... What are we? Are we waiting for some messiah? Or are we waiting for Hillary Clinton to come riding over the hills and solve it all? Are we waiting for a new vision in Turkey and Tehran and and Riyadh and you know, or is there something that we can do to build, I mean, um, a safer Middle East and a better Middle East for our children? And I think. Uh, First of all, we Iraqis, we don't want to be taking hostage from other countries or organizations in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. I d I'm not waiting, and I will be not waiting of any Arab with respect till he makes the decision. Mm. We don't. We are free, and we want to be free, and Iraq is Iraq. It's not a small country. Mm. We are not born in, in 60 or in 70 from Emirate to a big country. No, no, no. Iraq mm. is Iraq. Uh, secondly, uh, even if the government in this country or in other country, they have a problem or they are not mm. moving, yeah. it doesn't mean I have to wait till the prime minister here or the president there, he will be, he got the time and to say, well, let us shake down. <laughs> yes. Facebook, there is no borders in this Facebook, in the internet. What a wonderful thought, yes. Which is a wonderful, yeah. and I'm happy to, to, to tell you there is many, many thousands of Iraqi Jewish from Israel maybe and other parts of the mm. world, I really don't mm. know. But they write beautiful issues about Iraq. They are so worried about Iraq. They are so worried about the origin of their families and maybe the hope one day to be there. Uh, mm. The same also by other Muslim and clearly yeah. by the Kurd. They talk about it now in the, few, in the Facebook, and intelligence, they cannot control it. Islamic parties and militia, yes, uh, yeah. for these young people, they go to hell, they cannot control it, sorry for, mm. for the language. I mean, the future for the normality, mm. the future mm. for the youth. So we can have a positive future, we can have a world built on, well, not just Facebook, but as exemplified by the social media 
era we're moving into. We can have a more peaceful world where we all place an equal value on one another, whether it's Jew, Christian, Yazidi, or Sunni, or Shiite, or Kurd. We, we can have that. There is a better future, you believe? I believe we, shall, we must work for it, and we will have it. Oh, bless you. Well, I do hope you are right, and thank you so much, Mithal al for being our guest on ANN Television. Thank you. Bless your heart. Many, thank many thanks. You. Thank you. Well, that was interesting. And what a man Mithal al is. It's, it's, it's a horrendous thought that, um, that he paid for his political sense with, with the life of his sons. I mean, two sons died. Uh, in assassination attempts, um, well, not attempts, assass successful assassinations against his family. I just so awful that this should have happened. What it says about the world we live in. Uh, but um, but so this brave man has has taken a stand for peace. He's taken a stand for reconciliation. And we discussed the whole issue of Iraq today, what sort of country Iraq is today. Well, what sort of country is Iraq today? What future do we have for Iraq today? Where is Iraq going? It's terrible to think that it's, it's split apart, uh, split apart so horrendously with ISIS controlling much of the north. Well, according to Mithal, there is a possibility of a better future with a confederacy, with a coming together of the three parts, I mean, we've seen confederate nations. In theory, Switzerland is a confederacy. Um, is it a way forward? The, the idea that you have a kind of autonomous Sunni region, a kind of autonomous Shiite region, and an autonomous Kurdish region. Is that the answer? Many people think it is the only answer for Iraq. And where are we going, I mean, for the Middle East as a whole? Are we, are we going to see a less violent Middle East, a violent, an end to violence in, in the sense that we are moving towards peace instead of moving towards this terrible cataclysmic Sunni Shiite war that seems to be ripping the heart and soul out of much of the Middle East we know and love? Where are we going? What kind of future do we have? Let's talk about this some more. I would certainly, like we would at ANN, would like to hear your reaction. Uh, the email address is on the screen. Do get in touch with us. We value your opinions. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being our guests, because you are our guests. You're the ones we're talking to. Thank you for being with us on ANN Television today. Thank you. <laughs>